What is up, guys? All right, today's bleach, sorry, breach video is going to go over the my Bloodstalker build. All right, so Bloodstalker in the Shadow class in general is a dual wielding melee class, um, kind of like a rogue ninja type class. Bloodstalker specifically is one of my favorite classes in the game. Its default role, uh, don't mind this, its default role is warrior. And basically, they drain health. They leech. So they have their signature called Curse Strike will mark the target and cause the Bloodstalker to heal themselves. Um, so basically, I'm going to go over the exact build that I use, um, including the gear, gems, skills, and all that, and then show a little bit of how it's... In how it looks in action. Um, so first of all, let's go over the skills. I'm using Talon Frenzy from the Nighthawk class, which you unlock at level four, I believe. Talon Frenzy, I'm using that because mostly just damage and also while you use it, even though it doesn't tell you, you're immune to damage during Talon Frenzy. So for 2.5 seconds, you're just like attacking from all directions and you're immune. So it's a really good move to use, especially when you have the Blood Curse active, because you'll heal yourself and then you won't take damage during that time. Um, that's the main reason why I use that. Some people use Lethal Strike, and there's some nice bonuses you can get for Lethal Strike, and it is a quick move. So overall, you could probably do more damage with Lethal Strike, but I like this still does a decent amount of damage and has that extra immunity. So you can time that for specific attacks, like the Oni boss in Tokyo. When he pulls you in and gets ready to do his big slam attack, you can actually time Talon Frenzy to use it right before that, when you see the red, or when you just see the cast animation. And you will attack him and not get hit by the attack at all. So it's a, a bonus damage. You won't take any damage, and you don't have to worry about dodging out of it. So, that's why I use that. Assassinate is pure damage. And it is probably the, the strongest attack of all the shadow attacks. Especially, which I'll get to later, when you take into account the special prismatic gem. So normally, Assassinate will do 300 damage and an extra 1,000 damage when the enemy's health is less than 50%. So just, it's a huge amount of damage. Um, so that's why we use that. And again, the more damage you do, the more health you leech. So as long as you have Blood Curse active, then Assassinate will heal you for quite a bit. Uh, oh yeah, a little, a little bit more on, on Curse Strike. Uh, let me just fully explain it. So basically... You de it deals damage, and it'll apply Blood Curse to the target for 8 seconds. Again, some of the stuff is not clearly explained in the tooltips, so hopefully as early access goes on, there'll be more detailed tooltips, but not everything is fully explained or explained clearly. But basically, you mark the target for 8 seconds, and also has a cooldown of 8 seconds, and all your attacks against that enemy for those 8 seconds will heal you for 35% of the damage you deal. But if they're bleeding, then it's an extra 35%, so a total of 70% if it's a bleeding target. And then, after that, if they're still alive, anytime you attack them, um, once the, you know, the second time or third time, whatever, however many times you attack them again with Curse Strike, it'll do an extra 300 damage. So, your second hit on, you'll be doing 600 damage flat damage, you know, without, before the bonuses are added. And then also an additional 30% heal from your attacks. So, 100% leech, basically, once you hit them twice with Curse Strike. So that's, that's pretty huge. And then the passive, of course, for being a warrior is the heavy impact resistance, the extra 750 health, which is huge um, for the assassinate, which I'll explain later, and then an extra dodge. Now, Lacerate, this is something that you always have. Like, if you're playing a Bloodstalker, no matter what build you're using, you're going to have Lacerate because this is what causes the target to bleed. 
but and the damage is pretty good actually it's 275 damage and then an extra 280 instant bleed damage plus an 80 you know 80 bleeding damage um, for every stack over eight seconds so you always want to it has a six second cooldown so you always want to start off put last rate on the target hit them with curse strike and then you'll be you know healing for 70 uh, percent of your damage and the last rate will also stack so as long as you use it before it falls off it'll stack and it stacks up to four times so yeah that's a that's a pretty you know sizable amount of damage that's uh 320 damage once you get it up to four stacks if you, and as long as you can keep that on the target like you know an elite or especially a boss you're doing you know 320 damage per second so well not per second over eight seconds you're doing 320 extra bleeding damage but either way it, it just it adds up so that's it's essential to the build for not only damage but your healing that you'll do and then finally the ultimate that i'm using oh yeah one thing i forgot about assassinate it's a shadow blade ability so you have to level shadow blade up to level four to unlock it and then finally the ultimate i'm using for this build is the mob of ravens specifically because of the gear that i'm using the the normal ultimate is pretty good bloodlust it gets you 50 percent haste and 125 percent lifesteal for 10 seconds and that's that's really good because that that'll work no matter who you attack so you don't you know have to only attack your curse strike target but from my experience you know as long as the game actually detects that i hit them curse strike is is enough for me to heal um and that's you know that's if you're solo if you, and if you have a healer and you're i mean you're good there's really no need to have that ultimate so i've personally am using mob of ravens which is what i'm going to explain in the gear and gym section um, but basically mob, mob of ravens will spawn two allies that are immune to damage and they last for 20 seconds and then during that time they'll attack with basic attacks bird of prey and talent frenzy talent frenzy as you know is a ability from the Night Stalker and Bird of Prey is also the Night Stalker's signature ability which knocks people up in the air. So real quick for the gear, Fang Blades, before I go on the earlier gear, Fang Blades is what I'm using with Mob of Ravens because it makes Mob of Raven clones permanent. Now this is your weapon gear so this is the fourth talent you have to get to level four during a session in order to choose it but once you do your mob of ravens are permanent and that's amazing because one they don't take damage they're immune to damage so you have two allies normally that are immune to damage and they're just attacking the whole time so that's pretty huge now when you combine that with um, there's another gear piece that makes curse strike which is what I pick um, it causes causes all your allies attacks um, to heal you for 15% of their damage though. So as long as you strike a target, not only are you getting your 70 to 100% um, leech, you're also getting 15 leech from all your allies. And the mob of Raven's clones counts as allies. I mean, it says it right there, sh two shadow allies, but for the purposes of this ability, they count as allies. So all their attacks are giving you 15% of their damage still. And then there's another talent that I choose, which causes Mob of Ravens to create an additional Shadow Ally. So now you have three Mob of Ravens clones. They're healing you when they attack as well, and they can be permanent. So you just got three versions of yourself giving you all their leech as long as you use Curse Strike on a target. That's amazing. Plus, they're always going to be there. So it's perfect, even though yeah, it's a level four ability, but if you get it early, then you can go through the rest of the level, and especially good for the boss room, which is where a lot of groups usually end up dying. So that's that's a pretty huge um, boost. Um, yeah, the only other... Oh, there's two other talents that I use. Curse Strike, um, Taunting the Target. Um, that's really nice if you need to get a specific enemy off of a point or if there's an enemy uh, harassing your healer or other DPS, then, you know, you can do that and yeah it's just it's good it, it makes the blood stalker more of a tank and then lacerate which makes the you know lacerate ability apply two stacks of bleed at once 
So it just it just stacks the bleed up quicker, so more damage. That's basically just for damage. That's the only reason to pick it. Now, the Mob of Ravens, because of the ultimate I'm using Mob of Ravens, I always have I always have the Mob of Raven, you know, weapon. Otherwise I would pick a different weapon, but that's really right now there's not a lot of unique weapon talents and this one is just really good, especially for Bloodstalker. Always the ally one, because that'll make your clones heal you. And usually the Mob of Ravens clone. So this one is where you pretty much choose between taunt or the extra damage. And really it it depends on the group you're in, uh, the mode of that you're use that you're playing. Because I don't think taunt's gonna work on a player like if a if a player's playing Veil Demon and they possess an enemy, I don't think taunt is gonna make them attack. I think they can still attack different enemies. So that that's gonna be useless in that scenario. Plus you may not like it is nice taunting, it really is, but there's a reason why this game doesn't have taunt as you know default on tanks because it's not as necessary in other games. Like other games that have taunt, you know, in tanks, traditional, you know, DPS healer tank, they usually need a taunt to keep the enemies off um, their teammates. But you don't need that in this game. It is it is nice on certain situations, but it's it is very situational. So although the taunt does sound amazing. And I, I do enjoy it at times. It still just depends. Like, if you have a healer... Like, for one, if you have a healer in the group, you usually won't need it unless you're just getting focused. But at the same time, the NPCs aren't usually focusing specific enemies. And if it's a player, you probably can't talk them away anyway. So, in general, the the lineup of talents that, I'm, that I would use in a game would be Curse Strike, causes allies to heal you as well uh, extra mob of ravens um, clone two stacks of lacerate per application just for you know more damage and then mob of clones being permanent so for gems I use the health gem oh yeah this is what I was talking about before the two really the two important I would say mandatory gems are the health gem vitality sapphire because it gives you more health Blue gems give you more, um, like, defensive and healing stats. And then the orange gem or red gems are, are more for damage dealing. So you get 730 health if you pick the Vitality blue gem. That takes your health up to 3980. And then there's a Prismatic gem that makes Assassinate deal damage based on your current health instead of the target's health. Which means... Now you don't have to wait till, you know, they're less than 50% to do damage. Because 300 damage is not that much. But 1,300 damage, that's huge. So, and I'll show you real quick. With this, with just this gym, well, it's a, it's a little bit more. Um, you know, let me, let me go ahead and take off. Let's go take off these gems real quick. Because I have some, I have some bonus attack gems. So I'm going to take those off real quick. So you can see basically... Oh, whoops. <laughs> I took the wrong gem off. Um, there we go. I'm just going to show you how much damage you'll do now with Assassinate. So at full health with the health gem and the Assassinate um, gem, 1194. So that is less damage it's about a hundred less you know well 106 less damage by default but considering that you can use it as long as you're at full health you can use that whenever you don't have to wait till they're less than 50 percent health and that's really good for you know like bosses and or mostly elites that you want to burst down real quickly and it's even better for bloodstarker because as long as you're playing right and have this the right build you're gonna be healing for a lot. You're gonna you're gonna be staying at max health a lot, or at least close to max health. So that's why I choose that one because you're gonna be able to do more damage because you can just basically use use assassinate on cooldown and you'll be doing the maximum amount of damage instead of waiting. Um, as for the other gems, blue gem I use. Um, currently, I'm using a 
there it is bonus damage gem because I just I didn't buy the melee damage I just I bought general damage gems just so I can use them on multiple targets I mean multiple classes but ideally I believe all these are melee abilities yes so ideally you would want melee bonus attack gems instead of just flat bonus damage because the melee damage gems will give you gives you more than the regular bonus ones so I do have a bonus melee red gem and then where's the other one there's another yeah five percent bonus damage so bonus damage and melee damage and then for the blue gems you want melee damage but bonus damage also works and then health and then for the prismatic again the assassinate health based one and then I have the cursed uh, cursed strike lifesteal I like this one because this gives you an extra 20% to your lifesteal so that's uh, by default that is 55% just without doing anything and then 90% if you are um, you know if they're bleeding so that's that's just 90% from the first strike that's that's a huge thing and the cooldown is only like is a plus 20% cooldown that's an extra like two seconds yeah it's eight seconds and then it makes the cooldown which I can show you real quick uh, just makes the cooldown extra two seconds so see it's 10 seconds the extra two seconds is not that big of a deal the extra 20% leech is huge there are leech gems but the, the, the percentage that it gives you is just not going to be that much compared to the damage so this makes Bloodstalker a hybrid tank and DPS class. Now, it, as you can see, it actually changes the role to Assassin, and that's because of the skills. So, mostly the ultimate. So, if I change this ultimate back, see, now I'm a warrior. Uh, don't mind the role. The role just is really just what's listed, and it, it doesn't really matter. Because, in my opinion, this is still, this is still a, this is still a warrior. Now you're gonna be doing a lot of damage. Don't you know? Don't get that wrong. But this, it's not any less of a tank because I've changed my ultimate. Because the ultimate also only lasts like what ten seconds. Yeah. And yeah, it's 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 nice, but it's just I I think Mob of Ravens is better when you get the right bonuses. Of course, if you don't have the permanent clones and you know the ally health then mob of ravens is not gonna be as good because it's yeah it's just you're not getting really anything from it so as you can see here bonus damage bonus melee damage and yeah 3980 health almost 4k health so now I'm gonna show you I'm just gonna go into a quick bot game just to show you how it uh, works uh yes yeah, let's, let's go to Tokyo I'll go to the higher difficulty maybe they won't uh, fail too much AI is still just terrible but it'll also allow me to showcase the bloodstalker a little bit more I do wish though that the time that they give you before a match starts was a little bit shorter. I mean I guess it's I guess it's there to try and help the, the veil demon. I suppose, or kinda you know, but it's like forty seconds. So, you know, right off the bat allies now here when you're attacking your target uh with curse strike. So yeah, as soon as the match starts, I'm able to get healing from all my allies. And then of course with the gym setups that I have, you know, automatically my assassinate is health based. My curse strike is going to give me more healing. Um, yeah, it's really hard to kill a Bloodstalker with this build. Like you have to pretty much focus the Bloodstalker. Now again, because you have to mark the target, it's not good on, you know, these regular enemies like you know these enemies would probably just die there's you know it's not gonna help so if there's just like a lot of small enemies and no strong or elite enemies then you are gonna have a, a problem but you know as soon as you get one like that 
Oh, and that's another thing, and it, it's it's the only thing that really makes me upset about this game, is the hit detection. So this Novus Warrior that I hit doesn't have the debuff on it. Like sometimes it just doesn't detect that you hit them. Yeah, yeah like it just just doesn't just doesn't work sometimes. I don't know why it does that, but that's the only issue. Like Bloodstalker would probably be well it already is the best class or not the best class but it's one of the best classes but like as you can see I just use that curse strike and it just did you know just doesn't work sometimes yeah I'm actually okay that's that's ever that's never actually happened before I've never seen it miss that many times so I think in that situation I actually was hitting something else and it wasn't just failing. But th this is a perfect uh, perfect enemy to show it on. Hmm. You know, okay, it's not it's just not showing up. I am getting as you can see the green numbers is the leech. So I am getting it. It's it's immune right now. So I it 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 just wasn't showing up. I shouldn't have done that. But yeah, see, I'm still healing, and uh, I'm you know immune during that time, and they they are healing me. But yeah, that particular enemy is just kind of moving around a lot, so you got a little look of it. But in this next room, I'll be able to show it a little bit better. But yeah, the general idea is to and they're stacked up. <laughs> wow. Uh, hit them with lacerate first. Then hit him with curse strike, and then yeah, assassinate. And you get all the health. It's just so fun. Like, I love Talon Frenzy. It's so good to to use on the, uh, you know, anytime you need to just avoid something. And it does decent damage. It's like 500 something damage over time. Of course, you're you know. You can't move while you're doing it, but you're also immune to damage. So this is the first time I've actually seen the... B oh, never mind. I thought they were going to help. They go and attack whenever they see an enemy. Just wanted to sh I just wanted to show... For the videos, though, I just wanted to show one more time on a, on a strong enemy. Just how, just you know, how the healing and stuff works. There we go. This is perfect. So hit him with lacerate, or not. Hit him with lacerate. Hit him with a curse strike. I'm at full health, so there we go. Assassinate. And that all those green numbers. I don't. I haven't taken any damage, so yeah. As you saw right there, I just hit with 342. It hit twice. 342, 342. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I'm not taking the taunt. It's, it's double the damage whenever you hit them repeatedly. So it's really nice. But yeah, that's basically what I wanted to show of the Bloodstalker. Even on Adept, uh, they, they still kind of die quickly, but that's, you know, that's, you got the basic idea. You just hit him with that stuff, and then you're able to to heal. And it does a lot of damage when you use like assassinate. It's just this this class will rack up damage really quickly, especially when you're, you know, putting last rates. It's this is basically the elite killing class and setup. The regular enemies, you know, you don't want to waste your time with them. You have your teammates do that. You just want to take out the strong enemies. Like you just, you'll take them out so fast. Oh, now to have my ultimate real quick. Let me show you. So, well, <laughs> they died. You're probably, you're probably not gonna be able to see it. But basically, these enemies, I mean, these clones that are running around. If I had a target marked, then I'd be getting healed from. Them. You, got, you saw a little bit. There was a three right there. Because they only heal for a little bit. But when you have, you know, multiple clones all healing, 
it adds up. But that's all I wanted to show you in gameplay. And hopefully this Bloodstalker build will allow you to tank pretty much anything. Because, yeah, he just constant healing. It's just, it's really nice. So if you like the video, then please give it a like. Subscribe for future videos and, you know, click the bell notification so you'll be notified. And I'll be uh, doing a lot more videos. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching.